So I was working on my aquaponics today, which would explain why the water is so cloudy, because I just uh, increased the water by a third, and some of the water was dirty. But what I've added to the system is this guy right here. Kind of an interesting thing. It's a, well, it's a soda container. And what I have, move this away. Hey there, Jacqueline. Hey there, Jacqueline. This is the fishy that belongs in this tank. She's a bit nocturnal. She's a bit tired looking, and she's very, very aggressive. So this, she's the only thing I could put in this tank. And uh, actually, surprised she's out when the lights are still on so early. So, but anyway, what I've got is this container right here is part of a solids lifting overflow box. What I've done is I've hooked it up via tube to the tote that is a sump. And then I take I have the output of my or the input of my Eheim canister filter that then brings it up to the grow bed, which fills the grow bed, which has a bell siphon, which is an auto siphon that fills this tank, which then overflows of the solids lifting overflow box back down into the sump. Now by solids lifting, what I mean is the overflow tube actually goes all the way to the bottom of the tank where it'd be able to pick up um, any fish solids that were in the tank. Um, which isn't practical in this tank, but it is, uh, it's an option for some people may need. What makes it work is there's functionally a standpipe, which the top of this sets the level in your aquarium. So I've trimmed this tube to the right height using just a pair of nippers. And you can see I've trimmed it off a little bit by a little bit until I got it just to the right height. And what happens is it keeps the water level in the tank at a constant height. Um, this would be a implementation of a, a aquaponic system that they call CHOPS, or constant height one pump, which involves your sump, which is where the pump would be placed. You know, if you had a, a, a pond pump or something like that, it'd actually be in the um, sump, but because I'm using a, a aquarium canister filter, it's that green thing right there to that mess of wires and plumbing because um, I'm using a standard aquarium filter it's not actually in the uh, uh, sump but then that then pumps up to your flood drain and grow bed which then drains into your tank and then using a overflow box you can uh, control the height, water height of the tank now, a different style of overflow box that I've built is this one right here. And this is called a Weir Siphon Overflow Box. Basically what happens is it hangs on a tank. It's too small for this tank, obviously. And then this flat spot right here is called the Weir. That's what controls the water height inside the tank. So the tank goes high enough that it floods over that tank. The water flows down and it settles here. So the water will be no lower than this. So that means the siphon always uh, has water on both sides so the siphon never breaks. And this side right here controls the height of the siphon inside. And then 
water will flow in on this side, go up over the side of the tank, back down, and then it will overflow that weir and into the drain. Now what I learned with this one was one drain tube wasn't enough, so I put two drain tubes of the same size because I couldn't didn't have enough room to go bigger drain tube. Um, because you need significantly larger drain than what your um, height or your uh, uh, input pipe is. Because I was using this overflow box with you know the same Eheim and it would still uh, give me problems even with those two uh, hoses. It was all it wanted to do to drain it. So this time I used a much bigger hose and I'm still having issues with this draining slower than I really really want it to. Um, I had to tweak my pump a little bit because now not my pump, my siphon a little bit. I had to bring this from straight down up to a level because my aquarium height is now sitting much higher than it normally does. Um, so for the uh, water, for the siphon to break, I need to keep the tip of this out of the water because the water is right there. Um, and the water will actually raise up almost a half an inch there. You can see my auto siphon is just starting to siphon. And uh, see it's a little bit more, a little bit more water. It takes a while before it to actually fully start um, with this pivoted like this. With it straight down, it, it started a, a lot faster. Um, but now the water is rising up and is draining into this overflow box which is now draining into here. So you can see that there's water dripping out of this at this point. And uh, this should start here real good here in a couple seconds. You'll be able to see once it starts it gives a good aeration. Just give it a a boost. So we have to sit and wait for it to start to get it started. It's getting taller with the duration. And uh, so now this is draining. But I've got nearly eight inches of height between the top, the top of this water and the top of that water. So I've got eight inches that the uh, siphon wants to work at. So the siphon gives me a really good, really good flow. Now, this compared to this, they're only a half inch apart um, at most. Um, so I don't get real good flow out of this siphon, which can be demonstrated by this right here is as fast as this flows out, and that's actually not limited by this drain tube. It's actually limited by the siphon. Um, this tight bend right here has actually crushed the tube. It's pinched the tube a little bit, so that's actually restricting the flow. Um, the side effect of that is this can't keep up with this, so my water level actually comes up. Mm almost half an inch. So I've actually trimmed the uh, the top of this stand pipe down so the water level is just right at the visual line of the tank. So that way the little tank always looks full. But if you actually look straight at it when it's um, before it's starting to fill, um, you can actually see that the uh, you can see the meniscus of the water, but you can see uh, um, water levels falling. You can see how much it's actually picked up into the uh, pipe. Um, drain for the drain for the uh, 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 the bell safe. So this right here 
is now a 100 gallon system, a little bit over, because I've got a, uh, it's a 122 quart tote, which means I've got it uh, roughly 30 gallons, because um, I don't fill it quite full, plus the 75 gallons in this tank gives me, you know, 105 gallons. There's another gallon of water in the uh, canister filter, but that's not really significant. So this now pushes me over 100 gallons um, of water, and I have that one lonely Jack Dempsey, and uh, actually a Placosimus in there too. So I need to actually move her out into another tank so I could put more fish in here because I'm having uh, nutrient deficiencies with the uh, basil plant. Part of it is uh, uh, the pH is a little bit too high, so I think this basil plant's getting nutrient lockout. Although the uh, lettuces look really nice and good. So that's where I'm at with my new solids lifting overflow box, which isn't necessary in this tank. I could really just cut this tube off right here if I wanted to. Um, but for the reason I went all the way down is the bell safe and when it drains kicks up air bubbles and puts air bubbles into the water and those can get sucked into this pickup tube and those air bubbles will actually accumulate at the top of the siphon and cause the siphon to quit working. Um, so I'm not happy with this kink and the uh, flow control issues here. I'd like to rebuild this with uh, PVC. Uh, get a couple PVC elbows. I don't have any elbows. I just got tube connectors because that's what I've been using most of the time. So I've got a bunch of tube connectors. No, I, elbows. I'd like to build an elbow system that gives me a better flow. And then I'll probably replace this at some point with uh, you know, three inch diameter PVC with a step down and then another step down or maybe just drill the hole. Oh, how I made this, so it's just a solid piece all the way through and I drilled the hole on the bottom just a smidgen smaller than the tubes so I had to push hard to get the tube to fit and that gave me nearly a watertight seal to begin with and then I just add a little bit of silicone. Um, and that uh, gives me a good, reliable, solid seal um, because the silicone is just barely necessary to make the seal, uh, which means you get a, a much better silicone seal because it doesn't actually have to hold much water pressure, just that little dribble. And uh, that's what I did with this tube to make that work. It's uh, what I had on hand, so it cost me a uh, you know, $1.29 for the, the soda and a couple bucks for the, the hose when I bought it a while back. And, oh, to make the uh, stand here, what I did is I grabbed, well, here you can see my I failed uh, bottom. But I just had a, a metal rod that I shoved in the hose and then bent part of it over my knee to get the angle. And that's what I did to make the uh, make that bend in the um, siphon tube here. And that gives me a nice rigid bend because this hose, you know, was co been coiled up for, you know, however long it's been on the shelf plus however long I've owned it. So it didn't want to uncoil. You actually see it's nice and straight all the way down till the very end and then it starts to kink the coil right there because that's got about six inches on this end and about four inches on this end here where the rod isn't and so that it wants to coil up on each side. So this is my uh, aquaponic system in my laboratory.